episode of Talent Center Stage. My name is Cynthia Obiwane and I'm your host. On this show, we get to bring you amazing African talents. And today on this episode, I have with me an artist who has special skills with painting. Stay with me and you get to meet her right after the break. Welcome back to Talent Center Stage. With me on this episode is Chinem Nungo Gospel. You're welcome to the show, Chinem. Thank you very much, Ma. Okay, so let's get started with you telling us uh, a little bit about yourself and then go ahead to also tell us what you do. Uh, my name is Nungo Chinem Gospel. I'm from River State, out of West Local Government area. I'm a student at the University of Portugal studying the course of Fine Art and Design and by God's grace, I'm also an artist. Okay, your interest in art, uh, where was it developed? Has it always been there or you developed uh, that passion at a certain age? I developed it at a certain age when I was 13. Mm -hmm. And initially I wanted to study law right from when I was a kid. I loved law. When I watched movies, I saw lawyers and I, was, I had an interest in it. But mm -hmm. growing up, I found out that I could spend more time doing artworks. I can spend my whole day doing an art talk than reading. It was almost a problem. So I told my dad that I don't think I want to study law anymore. I want to go into art. And my dad was like, why? I said, because that's where my passion is. That's where I get my happiness from. And that was how it was Wow. I think I'm just, I'm surprised. This should be the, about the first time I'm hearing that a Nigerian parent says, uh, okay, just go ahead with your art words. And it, it is not like um, you must... Yeah, I had my mom's support also, so she, oh, yeah, very interesting. She stood up for me a lot. All right, so tell me, what uh, really motivated you to go into art? Like I already stated before, that the joy I get from it, like it gives me a lot of satisfaction. That when I'm doing any other thing, I love artworks a lot. Most when I see artworks online. I just go online, check for artworks and people doing art styles. I just got more interest and the satisfaction just evolved. Okay, and your specialty is painting. painting. Yeah. Okay, so tell me, is there any work that uh, you value most amongst all your artworks? Well, uh, not really, but it's one I did of recent. Mm -hmm. It's actually a mixed media work of paint and sand beads. What's that? Um, like the normal beads we use for accessories, I use them to make to create my own artworks. Mm, interesting. Okay. Yeah, and I titled that work "The Beauty and Soul of Africa." Wow. It's just a map of Africa, and then the background is painted in red. The gold there stands for the richness in Africa, our natural resources, the gold, the crude oil, agriculture. And the red there in the background stands for the outbreak of Ebola and the story it brought to us. Wow. Let's take a, take a short break. I want to go back and get to look at some of Chinami's work. From the web displays so far on the screen, I had a special interest in the one that uh, was made with sand bead. And I was wondering what uh, motivated you to do that work. Like you said, he talked about Ebola previously. Yeah. Regarding that work. So I was wondering if it was the Ebola outbreak or has some time ago in Nigeria that motivated it or there's something else. Well, I'm like, um, not really the Ebola outbreak. I've always wanted to do a work with Sandy that will just bring calmness to you whenever you see it. Even when you're angry, you can just look at it and say, wow, this work is so inspiring and it gives you this kind of inner peace. But when I was doing that work, I had a lot of people talking, saying things, trying to discourage me. They were yeah. like, why would you do a work with Sandy? Are you sure you can do this work? I was like, yes, don't worry. You see the art coming to be good. And when I finished that work, just actually, they were surprised actually that I could do something like this. And they could not interpret the work because they just saw it as a normal thing like a map of Africa with just colors around it but when I had to explain the work to them just like I actually did to you they now saw they now got more interest in the work and they actually wanted me to do more of those kind of works if I can for people and for them and that's okay so, so for some, some of the persons who have seen this work 
and uh, did you feel from the, their responses, did you feel they resonated yes. with the work yes. so far? Yes. They did. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Now, um, I know most artists have this attachment with a particular tool that they work with. So, for you, what is that tool that um, you can't do without? My painting brush. Your painting brush. Yeah. Okay. Now, without a painting brush, um, I, I take Chinem, I put Chinem in this room and lock her up, leave her with the paints. Can Chinem still go ahead to make something out of just the paint without a painting brush? Yes, I can. Using a palette knife. Okay. A uh, palette knife is a tool we use in mixing our colors. I want to do an artwork so I can actually use it to create something. It doesn't necessarily be something with a figure. You could just do um, a mixture of different colors while using the palette knife. Mm. Okay. Now tell me who inspires you? Monsuru is a Nigerian artist, but right now he's based in the US. He does realistic um, paintings with them, sand beads, just like I did with the map of Africa. Just most people they do realistic paintings with colors, but he loves using sand beads to create realistic paintings. There's one of his work I saw that wowed me, and I said I would like to work with this guy. It was just um, kids playing in a playground. He used sand beads to bring out everything. It was so natural, so real, that if someone tells you, look at this work, it's a sand bead, you won't believe it because it's so hard to believe. It's difficult because you don't actually think somebody can just sit down and think of using sand bead to create something like that. You know, I was actually going to come back to that because my next question, even though it answered it, would have been um, if you could mix uh, you sand be to make uh, a human. Yes. And, but I think you have answered that. Yes. And I'm still wondering what it will look like. Okay, now this takes us to the next question. Where do you think Nigeria is currently in art and where do you think it should be? Currently, for me, I think Nigeria, we are really trying in art because mm. everywhere we are, art is everywhere in our environment. Inside our bedroom, art is there. But it's just that most people don't value art. Mostly in Port Harcourt here, we just have few persons in Port Harcourt that value art. And mostly where you see good artworks will be maybe in something like a hotel or a club where they have good artworks, but not everybody value artworks here in Nigeria. So, in general, uh, if you are to rate uh, Nigeria on a scale of 1 to 10, where do you think we are with artworks? I, I think I'll scale them 6. Or six. I think 6 is really it's, good. Yeah, it's good mm. because we are actually improving. Looking right. at um, Olumide, he's actually doing something good with realistic paintings and Monsu is doing something creative with sand beads and I think we're really going far and we're trying a lot. Okay, so what challenges do you face as an artist? Well, I'm still a student, so I have so many challenges. I would want to do a work for somebody. They want to use the fact that I'm still a student now, so I should try and cut down price for them. If I want to do an art work for them, like there was a pencil work I did for someone. I didn't actually wanted to collect. It was just like a charity work I did. So somebody saw the work and was like, wow, I love this your work. Can you do something like this for me? And I said, yes. And he asked how much will it cost? And I told him the price and he was like, wow. Is that not too much? I said no, because you have to look at the time we put into the work. We spend a lot of time to bring out the face, everything, to make sure that the work is realistic. So I, as a student, I have so many challenges, trying to cope with school work, trying to cope with personal work to satisfy my people that are coming to patronize me. And there are, I just have so many challenges. Now, coming to pricing and you being a student, I was thinking, if someone you tell that you're a student, that we know that you're a student. So, what about going up, going about telling them you're an artist without you know, bringing in the student point of view into the picture? Well, I actually like bringing that into the picture, so they don't give me so much work to do. For me. I have I already have a lot of workload in school, so I don't want to just come out and tell them, okay, I'm an artist. I like putting it putting in that I'm still a student, so they will know the kind of work they're giving to me to do. Okay, so I'm sure because you're still a student, you're not part of any organization or no, association no. that has to do with that. Yeah. Okay, now my last question is what do you have to tell our audience and upcoming artists well what i would say is for the upcoming artists just believe in yourself we all have our different ways of 
doing art we all have different stories different characters different approach to art so you just have to master what you're good at if you're good with pencils you master it if you're good with colors you master it if you're good with mixed media using materials beads anything just master your art that's what i can say to you wow now she how do our viewers and audience want to reach you get across to you uh, you can get me on Facebook at Chine Mugo and on Instagram at Chine Mugo. For our audience and viewers who are looking at this uh, via the social media angles, please share, subscribe, follow and like our pages and do well to tag friends who you know that really needs to see this episode.